Hey there, I'm Robert Thompson. Before I dive into my story, why don't you hit that like button and subscribe? Trust me, you'll want to stick around for this roller coaster. So, I'm 55 years old and proud to say I've been keeping Lincoln High School spick and span for the last 20 years. It's honest work, and I've always believed in the dignity of any job well done. My son Marcus, he's about to tie the knot with this girl Vanessa. She comes from money, but hey, love doesn't care about bank accounts, right? When Marcus first told me about the engagement, I was over the moon. I mean, my boy, getting married. I couldn't stop grinning for days. At work, I was practically floating down the hallways with my mop. Robert, you winning the lottery or what? My buddy Dave asked one day. Better than that, Dave. My Marcus is getting hitched. I started picking up extra shifts, determined to give them something special. One night, as I was locking up, the principal caught me. Thompson... You trying to live here now? Just saving up for my son's wedding gift, sir. Want it to be something they'll remember? He nodded, understanding in his eyes. You're a good man, Robert. But things started getting weird when I finally met Vanessa. Don't get me wrong, she's pretty as a picture, but there's something, um, off about her. The first family dinner was awkward as hell. So, Robert, she said, eyeing my calloused hands, do you... Enjoy your work? I smiled, not catching her tone at first. Sure do. Keeps me active, and I like making sure the kids have a clean place to learn. She wrinkled her nose. Ah, How quaint. I suppose someone has to do it. Marcus just sat there, suddenly very interested in his mashed potatoes. I felt my smile falter, but I brushed it off. Maybe she was just nervous. But it kept happening. Every dinner, every family get-together. She'd make these little comments. Oh, Robert... You must tell me where you got that interesting shirt. Is that where janitors shop? Or, Marcus Darling, remind me to have the cleaning service come before your father visits next time. No offense, Robert, but we wouldn't want you feeling like you need to work during family time. Each time I'd look to Marcus, hoping he'd say something, but he'd just shift uncomfortably, sometimes changing the subject, sometimes pretending he didn't hear. It was like a knife twisting in my gut. One night, after a particularly rough dinner, where Vanessa spent 20 minutes talking about the help at her parents' country club, I pulled Marcus aside. Son, can we talk about Vanessa? He sighed, not meeting my eyes. Dad, please. She doesn't mean anything by it. She's just from a different world. A world where it's okay to look down on people? You're exaggerating. She's just nervous about fitting in with us. I wanted to shake him to make him see what was happening, but the way he was looking at me, like I was the problem, it broke something in me. As I drove home that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was losing my son. The wedding was coming up fast, and instead of joy, all I felt was dread. What was supposed to be the happiest day of my boy's life was turning into a nightmare for me. I parked in front of my modest little house, the one I'd worked so hard to provide for my family. For the first time in my life, I felt ashamed of it, of myself, and that shame quickly turned to anger. Not at Vanessa, not really, but at Marcus, my own flesh and blood standing by while I was belittled and mocked. As I turned off the engine, I made a decision. I'd give it one more shot, one more chance for Marcus to stand up for his old man. But if he didn't, well, I guess I'd have some tough choices to make. The phone rang, jarring me from my thoughts as I polished the trophy case at school It was Marcus. My heart leapt. Maybe he was calling about wedding preparations. Hey, son, what's up? There was a long pause. Dad, I... I don't know how to say this. My stomach dropped. What's wrong? Is everyone okay? Yeah, everyone's fine. It's just... Vanessa and I were talking, and... Dad, we think it's best if you don't come to the wedding. The world stopped. I gripped the phone tighter, sure I'd misheard. What? It's just... Vanessa's family is really high class, and she's worried that, well, that I'll embarrass her? The words tasted like bile. Dad, please understand. It's a really important day for her. And what about you, Marcus? Is it not important to you to have your father there? Another long pause. (laughs) Of course it is, but, but not as important as making Vanessa happy, right? 
Dad, don't be like that. We'll celebrate together after, okay? Just us. I hung up without saying goodbye. The trophy case reflected my face, and for the first time, I saw an old, broken man staring back. The next few days were a blur. I went through the motions at work, barely speaking. Sarah, my co-worker, cornered me in the supply closet. Robert, what's going on? You look like death warmed over. I tried to brush her off, but Sarah wasn't having it. She dragged the story out of me, her face growing stormy. That little witch? And your son just went along with it? Oh, Robert. She hugged me tight, and I'm not ashamed to say I cried on her shoulder. Meanwhile, word got around. The other janitors, the teachers, even some of the kids, they all knew. The pitying looks were almost worse than the pain. One afternoon, I overheard two teachers talking in the break room. Did you hear about Robert's son? Uninvited his own father from the wedding? No. Why? Apparently the bride thinks he's not good enough. Can you believe it? That's disgusting. Poor Robert. I slunk away, face burning. Was I really that embarrassing, that shameful? Sarah tried to lift my spirits, inviting me for coffee after work. As we sat in the diner, she leaned in close. You know, I heard some interesting gossip about Miss High and Mighty. Sarah, I don't want to hear... No, you need to hear this. My cousin works at the venue they're using. Apparently, Vanessa's been a nightmare, screaming at the staff, demanding impossible things, threatening to sue over every little detail. I sighed. That doesn't surprise me. There's more. She got into a huge fight with her own mother over the centerpieces, called her an old hag with no taste right in front of everyone. Despite myself, I felt a flicker of something. Not quite satisfaction, but close. Her true colors are showing, Sarah continued, and people are noticing even her fancy friends are starting to distance themselves. I stirred my coffee, lost in thought. It doesn't change anything. Marcus still chose her over me. Sarah reached across the table, squeezing my hand. He'll regret it, Robert. Mark my words. That night, I sat in my empty house staring at old photos of Marcus growing up. Where had I gone wrong? How had I raised a son who would throw away his father for a pretty face and a fat wallet? The phone rang again. It was Marcus. Dad, I, I'm i sorry about before. I shouldn't have... Save it, Marcus. You made your choice. Dad, please, can't we talk about this? I hung up, tears streaming down my face. The day of the wedding arrived, and I found myself staring at the TV, not really watching. My phone buzzed incessantly, but I ignored it. Probably just Sarah checking in again. A knock at the door startled me. I opened it to find Dave, my co-worker, grinning like a cat that ate the canary. Rob, buddy, you gotta see this. He shoved his phone in my face. It was a social media post going viral by the second. Local bride uninvites father of the groom for being a janitor. Is this the wedding of the year or a disaster in the making? My jaw dropped. Dave, what did you do? He shrugged, still grinning. Wasn't me, man. Sarah and the gang put it together. It's everywhere. As I scrolled through the comments, my phone rang. It was Marcus. Dad, what the hell is going on? There are reporters outside the venue. I couldn't help but chuckle. Karma's a funny thing, son. This isn't funny. Half the guests are refusing to come in. They're saying we're elitist snobs. In the background, I heard Vanessa screeching. Marcus, get off the phone and fix this. You made your bed, Marcus. Now lie in it. I hung up, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. Dave clapped me on the back. Come on, Rob. We're meeting the others at O'Malley's. This calls for a celebration. At the bar, Sarah and the rest of my co-workers cheered as we walked in. Robert, you should see the chaos we've caused. Sarah giggled, clearly a few drinks in. I shook my head, torn between amusement and guilt. You guys didn't have to do this. Like hell we didn't, growled Pete, our oldest janitor. Nobody messes with one of our own. As the afternoon wore on, updates trickled in. Marcus's childhood best friend, Tommy, called me directly. Mr. Thompson? It's Tommy. I... I couldn't go through with it. What they did to you? It's not right. I swallowed hard. Thanks, Tommy. That means a lot. Half the groomsmen backed out, too. It's a mess, sir. Later, a text from my niece, who was a reluctant bridesmaid. Uncle Rob, you wouldn't believe it. So many empty seats. 
Vanessa's mom is in tears, saying her daughter's ruined everything. The cake lady refused to deliver after seeing the post. It's chaos. As evening fell, the bar TV flashed breaking news. Society wedding turns to scandal, bride accused of classism as groom's father uninvited for being janitor. The bar erupted in cheers. I sat there, emotions swirling. Part of me felt vindicated, but another part ached for the son I'd lost. Sarah plopped down next to me, her eyes soft. You okay, Robert? I nodded slowly. Yeah, I think I am. For the first time in a long time. She squeezed my hand, and in that moment, surrounded by true friends, I realized I hadn't lost a family. I'd found a better one. The dust from the wedding fiasco had barely settled when Marcus showed up at my door, looking like he'd aged ten years overnight. Dad, I... I messed up. I'm so sorry. I crossed my arms, leaning against the doorframe. Bit late for that, isn't it? Please, can we talk? I've been such an idiot. Part of me wanted to slam the door in his face. But I stepped aside. You've got five minutes. As Marcus stumbled through his apologies, my phone buzzed. It was an email from Johnson Industries, a local business. They'd seen the viral post and were impressed by my work ethic. They wanted to interview me for a facilities manager position, double my current salary. I tuned back into Marcus's rambling. And Vanessa's family is furious. They're saying we humiliated them. Dad, I don't know what to do. Sounds like a you problem, son. I've got a job interview to prepare for. His eyes widened. Job interview, but Dad, your job at the school is in my past, just like you. The look on his face almost made me waver. Almost. Over the next few weeks, life took some wild turns. I aced the interview and started my new job. The team welcomed me with open arms, no snide comments about my background in sight. Sarah and I grabbed coffee to celebrate, and somehow, that coffee turned into dinner. And dinner turned into... well... Let's just say I wasn't spending my evenings alone anymore. Meanwhile, the fallout from the wedding disaster kept coming. Vanessa's family's country club revoked their membership, citing behavior unbecoming of our standards. Ironic, considering how they'd looked down on me. Marcus called again, sounding desperate. Dad, Vanessa's left me. Says I'm bad for her image now. Can I, can I come stay with you for a while? Sorry, son. Spare room's being renovated. Try Tommy. I hear he's got a couch. I hung up, feeling a mix of sadness and relief. The son I'd raised was gone, replaced by a stranger I no longer recognized. Months passed. Sarah and I grew closer. My new job challenged me in ways I'd never imagined. And for the first time in years, I felt truly happy. One sunny afternoon, as Sarah and I walked through the park, we ran into Vanessa. She was alone, looking nothing like the polished socialite I remembered. Mr. Thompson, I... I'm sorry for everything. I nodded, not breaking stride. I hope you learned something from all this, Vanessa. As we walked away, Sarah squeezed my hand. You're a better person than me. I might have tripped her into that pond. I laughed, realizing that the anger and hurt that had consumed me for so long was gone. In its place was gratitude. For my friends. For Sarah. For this unexpected second chance at happiness. Life had thrown me one hell of a curveball, but I'd come out swinging. And you know what? I wouldn't change a damn thing. That's the end of Robert's journey. What would you have done in his shoes? Would you forgive Marcus or cut ties completely? Share your thoughts below. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.